Hello and welcome to this edition of A Life Less Serious, where we think about how seriousness gets in the way of being all we can be in our lives. And today I'm joined by the lovely Juliette Fay, who is a Three Principles facilitator, a poet and a writer. Juliette, thanks so much for joining me today. Oh, you're welcome, George. It's um, it's a joy to be here with you in this conversation. It's, it's um, I imagine we're going to have a lot of fun, even though we're talking about seriousness. Definitely, <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, and and Julia, um, I know that you've done a lot of travel, and 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 you had some really interesting um, insights around holidays and travel and seriousness um, do you want to share anything about that with with, with people um, today yeah certainly well when you asked me to add to the book George I um, struggled with what to write about because there were so many areas of my life where seriousness had just just been a real killjoy you know just made things difficult and I'd struggled and kind of making mountains out of molehills to quite an extreme degree in some areas of my life. And so I couldn't choose. And then after quite a long time, it dawned on me that there was one area in my life that had always been easy and it was traveling. So it was really fun writing the, the piece because I did a little kind of um, jog through like quick I look at all the different ways I'd got to travel but as I was writing the piece I saw some really really interesting things um, so first off I realized you know I'd I've been very lucky and I'd been able to travel almost regardless of my circumstances so sometimes I had money sometimes I had no money sometimes I had a partner sometimes I didn't sometimes I was with my family sometimes I wasn't sometimes I was alone um sometimes it was hot and sunny sometimes it was freezing cold uh, so that was very interesting like oh and, and all the time there were ups and downs obviously but I you know I loved it and I realized that I'd gone through most of my life thinking traveling is really the only time I feel really happy and free and even when things go wrong, which they always did, homesickness, you know, getting ill, um, disasters, they never seemed as bad as the things that go wrong when I was at home. So, in fact, they became really funny stories, usually, as they do, you know, afterwards. And so it wasn't really until I wrote the piece for the book, which, you know, which you put together, that I began to see, oh, you know, I thought happiness lay in a ticket away from my hometown or wherever I was living. And it didn't matter, you know, or, or even a tank of fuel, just get in the car and go away for the weekend and it'll all be great, you know. <laughs> um, and as I started to sort of muse on that, I thought, oh, OK, so what was really going on then? Because it looks a bit different to me now. What it looks like is. When I was away, I just had a lot less on my mind. And I speak to this in the last couple of pages of my piece, that it was as if I was able to just be more present, more open and curious. And I was almost set up to be delighted by all these new experiences. And, it was, and without knowing it, it's like I left a whole load of thinking at home. And most of that thinking was probably about me, you know, my insecurities and am I doing enough? Am I being enough? Do I, you know, does my bum look big in this? All that kind of insecure thinking. It's like, yeah, it's like it didn't get on the plane with me. It didn't come with me. And when I saw that, you know, there's huge freedom in that because you start to realise, well, do I have to carry around all this thinking about what's wrong? with me or my life or the world and when you begin to wonder about that it really opens up the possibility that in my case I don't have to get on a plane to find that kind of joy in life and that's been just amazing 
um, yeah. Thank you, Julia. I think that's really powerful. I think a lot of people relate to that because they think that holidays, you know, they can only relax when they get on holiday, even though a lot of us would have had experiences where we haven't had such relaxing holidays and, you know, and leading up to holidays may not be so relaxing, but a lot of us will think, I, you know, I can't let my guard down. I can't, you know, I'm, I've got to have that holiday. I need a holiday. You know how people talk desperate need a holiday, like it's the salve all of everything. And, and actually, I think what you're alluding to that uh, it, it creates a space for you to drop everything, but that's available at other times as well. Do you want to talk about a little bit about that, how you've seen it in your life and how it's available outside of holidays, maybe? Yeah, sure. And, and you touch on something really, you know, va valuable there, George, is that you can equally be on holiday and be having the most horrendous time. And when you look at what's going on there, it's probably because you brought all the thinking about the job or the family or the relatives or the friends or the, the leak in the bathroom or whatever it is. You've kind of packed it in your suitcase and brought it with you. And so you don't get that um, break that you were hoping for. And then what, what we often do in our mind as well, then we go, oh my God, I'm on holiday. I should be having a good time. Why aren't I having a good time? And you can sort of see that the stress level just starts to ramp up, you know, and then someone comes in and says, oh, I don't know, it's raining. And everyone goes, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and before we know it, you know, everyone's mood has kind of collapsed and we're having a bad time. But we were talking before the break and you can also notice that that can all change again in a flash mm -hmm. somebody suddenly laughs at you know the ridiculousness of something and the whole temperature can lift again and I think that's what we're we're really interested in and um, I don't think I've answered your question George so maybe <laughs> either well, ask it again or, or pick no, up I, th I think that's I think what you were saying is true maybe we can go back to it outside of holidays because I it's funny when you talk about the weather thing because you know, we, we kind of want good weather when we go on holiday, don't we? But then also, if you're in like me and go camping in England, that's often, I think I've had five years of bad and one year of good. So, <laughs> but then it's really funny because I think that, you know, when I look at it and we have had some really good times in the rain, out eating cream teas in the rain, in our waterproofs. And if you, in your day-to-day -day life, you just wouldn't do that, would you? And yet you do these things in a holiday. And, and, and so I think the crossover is quite funny. You can look at it like that way. But likewise, the crossover, going back to like, how do you see that in your day to day life? Because, you know, things you might do on holiday that you, you would never do and you really enjoy doing, you, you definitely wouldn't do at home. And likewise, I think what we started to talk about was how you can drop your just like you say, if you have an experience of a holiday and you drop your thinking and you don't pack your 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 baggage in your baggage, <laughs> you know how is that accessible when you're when, when you're not on holiday and, and in your day to day lives? Maybe it'd be interesting for people to to reflect on that a little bit and 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 share your 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 wisdom on that. Yeah, so I I think it's quite interesting because what can happen is when you're at home and you're in your routine of your daily life whether it's around work or people or family or friends or commuting or whatever it is it's very easy to just get into habits of thought and we don't always notice we're doing that and I, that's why travel traditionally you know people are in a new place new environment just like you're saying so having a cream tea in the rain can feel like fun but really you know the only difference it's it's quite subtle in a way but it's also really hopeful is that I mean for me personally if I gave the impression that I don't have any insecure thinking I apologize because I absolutely do I have absolutely the same flavors of you know insecurity that I've always had it's just that they don't it's not quite as compelling as it once was and to the title of your book, when we're away on holiday, maybe because we're having lots of new experiences, new sights and sounds, it's easier to not pay attention to any niggles and sort of 
uncomfortable thoughts and feelings that might come up. So we don't really notice we're not paying attention to them. We just think, oh, I'm on holiday, so I'm mm -hmm. relaxing because I'm having a great time because I've left all my, you know, I'm away from my life, my work, my whatever for a week. But actually what you've done is you've slightly disengaged from your habits of thinking. And when you cotton on to that and wonder about, well, can I do that in my daily life? I think it's really helpful to see that if you're expecting to never feel a bit down or a bit off or a bit rubbish or a bit irritated, then good luck. <laughs> <laughs> you know like sorry I'm laughing and that sounds might sound cruel to people that I'm laughing because I'm not laughing because I'm laughing because it's not possible I mean it's just not possible and 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 and, and, and I think it just it fuels it more doesn't it absolutely and and what happens is, you know, it's so kind of comical, but but like we all know we can really suffer is that we can take that thinking really seriously back to the title of the book. So, you know, in like on holiday, that's a really good example of the rain and the cream tea. So at home, you might get to open the curtains and like it's been I'm in Wales and it's been incredibly misty and wet the last week. And it's really easy to open the curtains and go, oh, and that's fine, you know, but if you then start just having all these thoughts that you pay attention to about why is it so wet? Why is it so misty? Why can't the sun come out? You know, you can just watch what your mood does. It mm. just kind of plummets. And so really, we're not saying you have to have any particular kind of thinking. But if you don't take it very seriously, so like, oh, I'm a bit stressed. It's Monday morning. Oh, well, never mind. Mm. So is half the population that's a bit stressed on Monday morning. Mm. It doesn't actually matter. Then you begin to notice that you, it, it sounds a bit wacky, but you know, what if you can be on holiday every day? And what if the difference between being on holiday and not being on holiday is just the weight of your thinking and yeah. how much, how seriously you take it? Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think that, you know, we started to touch on it, didn't we, about it's not just holidays, is it? People have other rules around it, don't they? They have other rules like, you know, I have to go go for a walk or I do yoga and or I do meditation and that's my time to drop it. And that doesn't always work either. No. And, and, and so it's not just about holidays, is it? It's kind of, we don't even realise we make these rules up, do we? We don't even realise that we make these things up about, I'm going to feel right when I do this and I'm going to feel all right when I do that. And then when it doesn't quite work out, then we're even more hard on ourselves or, or the situation. And it's so innocuous because we don't even realize we're doing it. And I guess, I guess this whole conversation and these conversations that we're having on, on this podcast is all just giving, giving us sharing where we've got eyes for this kind of thing when we do, <laughs> because we don't always either like, you know, half the time I, we slip into stuff because we don't even realize we're doing it ourselves because it's so habitual and just we're just being human really aren't we so yeah and it's I guess what the book is pointing to and that's why it's just such a fantastic sort of collection that you brought all these amazing women together to tell their kind of real life experience of seeing that sort of how seriousness it doesn't just um, feel, um, you know, heavy. It actually makes the world look different. Yeah, definitely. And you, for the listeners, you know, just just muse on this. Just contemplate. Look at areas in your life, like like George was saying. You might feel it's when you're in a certain place on the beach or on the in the mountains, in the woods, in the park, or when you're doing yoga, when you're listening to your favorite albums. Um, so I show my age there, aren't I? Favorite playlists. <laughs> <laughs> and just sort of um, it's quite interesting if you, you the funny thing is when we're when we're not serious and we're having a great time, which is I think how I ended the essay, we often don't notice because we're just living and we're just enjoying our experience without too much analysis and thinking about what it means or who we are. 
But if you catch yourself in that kind of just that really nice, beautiful feeling, just take a moment to notice that that's coming from inside you. Mm. And wonder about, well, you know, maybe it's available other places too. And just, I mean, I would say just play, just experiment and see what comes in. I love that, um, Julia. Thank you. And I guess that leads me to ask you the question. <laughs> What does a life less serious mean to you? Well, it means giggling more, um, which I really, <laughs> really love. I was talking to my mum the other day and she said that when I was a baby, you know, a toddler, I was always giggling. And I think a life less serious kind of means getting ourself back, our kind of big self, where, you know, I think life is, we're here to appreciate and enjoy life and when we're less serious that happens just naturally oh well thank you julia thank you for sharing with us that's really beautiful and uh, i guess i'll end by saying to everyone we wish you all a life less serious thank you george thanks julia